Hey friends, welcome to episode 60 of the Note Coach podcast, writing a memoir. So today I have joining me once again, the fabulous Claire McKinnon, who is currently in the process of writing a memoir. And I have written and published my first memoir. And I love it when I say this to people because they're like, what do you mean? How can you have more than one? My first book, The Beginning of Shit, an unapologetic weight loss memoir is about my weight journey. My second memoir, currently named The Messy Middle, but we don't know because I've got to get around to actually writing it, is about my entrepreneur journey. And the third as yet unnamed memoir is about parenting. So <laughs> if you don't know Xanthi and Casimir yet, you will. Um, so I invited Claire back because I wanted to talk about someone else's experience of of writing a memoir. So Claire, how has it been or how's it going for you? It is possibly the most beautiful and the most difficult thing I've ever attempted to do. So I know now, like I have this knowing that I am going to finish it yes. because I've invested so much in this in terms of energy, time. And I feel like every scene I write changes me. Like it, it's it's just this beautiful process of self-discovery. If you were to say to me, so Claire, when's it going to be out? When's it going to be done? I don't know. Which I, I did, right. people. Just sorry to interrupt yeah. you there, but I did before we hit record <laughs> and you're like, I don't know. But the other thing I just want to say quickly is beautiful and difficult. I think it's Brene Brown. She says brutiful. Have you heard that before? Oh, no, I haven't. But that's that's the word. That's the word I've been missing. Yeah, it's that. Um, And... I re really resonate with what you said about, you know, this, you haven't just, you're going to write more memoir because as I understand it, you know, memoir isn't the story of your life. It's a specific part of your journey. It's a theme. And the theme that mine's about is about um, the journey from shame to aliveness and being willing to, to allow myself to be seen. And the, the story line is about how I found my way back to dance and eventually burlesque. And everything that's liberated in me as a woman. So that's, it's a very specific story. But all the reasons, of course, I felt ashamed as a woman and hid are rooted in experiences that I had as a girl, as a woman. And those things are not easy to write about. And yes. they need to be written about. So I feel like each piece that I write, each scene, it's, it's shining some light on that. And sometimes I'll write one scene leave it and then come back to it a few months later and there's this other layer of of depth but that is a very um it's an intimate process and it's the kind of writing you wouldn't just chuck out there on social media it's like it it most certainly belongs in the sanctity of a book all tied together with this narrative so it feels sacred as well like it feels like it's a gift I'm giving to myself and when it's ready when I I feel like it's well, I'll know when it's ready, then it will be one that I can offer to the world. When that will be, um, I don't know. But I'm I'm working on it most days. You know, it's it's not that I'm sitting around feeling resistance. It's just that sometimes I write something, think it's true. And then when I go back to it, I went, oh, my goodness, that was what was really going on. Like, it's like this, like, excavation. So. I love that. So, yeah. I said to you before we hit record, for me, writing my memoir, my first one, felt like, cutting open, like slitting my emotional wrists and bleeding emotions everywhere. Like the stuff that came up and came back through. And especially because of memoir and a lot of the stuff from when you were younger, like a, a young child or a young girl, you are then revisiting it with current used wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Yeah. And you can have so much more compassion, but the wounds themselves can still be quite fresh or can still feel fresh and can feel activated. And for me, and for anyone listening who's thinking about writing a memoir but is unsure, um, my advice, and I'd be interested to hear what Claire's advice is, but my advice would be becoming really in touch with what you're doing it for. For me, I did it. So at the end, like I knew it was done when I held it in my hand. So when the proof came, the, the when you um, self-publish, you or I self-published, you can order a proof to make sure it's all formatted and everything correctly. And in that moment, I knew it was done. Like I'd got what I wanted from it. And whether people read it or not or got something, like I hope that they did and they do. And I do get messages about it. I got one just last week. So if you're listening to the podcast, you know who you are, said it was the best weight loss memoir she'd read. And I, I really received that. But it's kind of like it was such a healing point because, 
you know, and then there always is the doubt when you're especially writing memoir because other people are listed and other people in your life may read it and then, you know, make meaning of your meanings and things can come up. And that's why I was very clear at the outset of mine that it was never intended to paint anybody in a particular light. This was my experience. And me now, I didn't write it as Sue's pushing 40. I wrote it from what I remembered knowing and stuff at the time. If I'd written it as a back recollection or, you know, thing, it would have been written very, very differently. But what do they say? Life's lived forward and understood backwards. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. And so then, what about you, Claire? Like what's been like, you know, for the process, the biggest takeaway or the biggest thing for you or for anyone listening who's tempted and is kind of scared or nervous, what would you say to them? So I would say the greatest gift of this process is that the process of writing the book is is almost having me become the woman I need to be to write it. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, that makes so it's total like... sense. <laughs> so... It's a, you know, it is a story. It and, and I think this is also, this may help if anyone's considering doing this. The ending of my story is not, and then she was completely liberated, never felt afraid ever again and didn't give a fuck about what anyone thought. That is not the ending of my story. That is not who I am or where I am. It's, the ending is, and then she felt less afraid and she felt more free to be who she was and express what she wanted to express and share that with other people. And I co- I'll continue to live that story for the rest of my life. This, this process of writing the book, it feels like a, really like a, an act of generosity to myself, to my younger self. It is, in, it is most definitely healing um, and it is liberating me. So it is a story. You know, I was, I was more liberated than I was, you know, before I started writing it, it was about, how dancing has helped me liberate myself and writing it is almost like helping me integrate that even more so it's like the to me it feels like it's the ultimate it's an ultimate exercise in integration because you're really exploring and delving into and just bringing that all in and it's also reminded me as well to to it's got me back in touch with some of the things. So one one day I was writing about the first time I went to a salsa class. That's when my jer- jer- dancing journey began. And I hadn't, you know, I'd moved on to other kinds of dance, but I hadn't danced salsa for a number of years. And just the act of writing that and, and remembering the joy and the, the feeling of being on the dance floor and being spun around by complete strangers for the first time, I was like, oh my God, why aren't I still, why aren't I doing this now? And it, it had me sign up for a different salsa class locally. And I've been doing that now for a year that came out of writing the book. So it is also like infusing my life now with pieces of, of joy and, and helping me deepen into it even more. So it's, yeah, it's, it feels, it feels very beautiful. It really does feel like a gift. And that's why actually I, I know I'll publish it, but it's not about a deadline. It's not about it all being about that. That will happen. I know it will. But it really is about the journey of doing it and everything that's bringing. Yeah. I love that so much. I love how you described it as it's not at the end about she had no fear and she gave no fucks and she flew off into the sunset. And I think for anyone listening, that's what holds a lot of us back from going after many things because we're like, well, I'm not perfect yet. Even though on some level we know that we'll never be perfect. But for whatever it is that you're wanting to do, the people who are attracted to your work or your potential work are attracted to it because of your struggle, because they're like, oh my gosh, that's relatable. I've been there or she's been there or she gets me. Whereas someone who, you know, did have the happily ever after road off into the sunset and whatever, nobody wants to read that story. (laughs) When I read stories like that, yeah, mate, that isn't the kind of story I want to read. I don't, to me, it doesn't feel real. And to me, memoir is about telling the truth. Yes, we're we're telling the truth. What is the truth? The absolute truth that we are able to access, and yeah, that isn't my truth. It's yeah, not. your truth and, and your experience. So that's yeah. that's the thing too. Whenever you write and share a story, whether it becomes a memoir or a post or a blog or whatever, that's about something that's happened to you. Mm-hmm. You're writing about your experience of it. Yeah. And what I think is so amazing, like you know, there are times where. I think of like family holidays or events and, you know, my husband, Jeremy, and I've gotten home and we're so exhausted and we're like, what the hell shit show was that? And the kids have been like, this was the best ever. We had a totally different experience. Like I'm disappointed because, you know, something was late or whatever. 
but that, you know, so we all are sharing not to make anybody else right or wrong or convince them to our side or say it didn't yeah. happen or do some weird gaslighting shit, but to say like, we all, we could all go watch a movie today or read a book today and have very different experiences though. The source material <laughs> that we're consuming is exactly Absolutely. the same. Yeah. And one other thing that you said that I want to bring light to, um, you talked about, you know, transformation and integration. Mm-hmm. So from the, from what I, the way I see things, there's three levels. There's the information, like where you read a book, listen to a podcast, watch a movie, do a training course. Like you have the information. You're like, oh, this is fabulous. And then you're like, well, why is my life not changing? Like I know for me, it's like, I'm in this personal development world. I've spent all this money and time and nothing's changing. It's like, are you actually doing anything different or are you just consuming information? Mm. I was like, oh, that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a hard lesson to learn. And there's transformation where you actually take the shit that you're learning and and do it. (laughs) And then there's the integration where it becomes, you know, part of your everyday or your new normal or, you know, the blueprint of who you are now. And I think, you know, writing about it, whether you choose to publish or do it as a memoir or in whatever way, shape or form, you know, journaling, even just journaling for yourself really helps with that integration because you don't really realise how far you've come until you take that time to integrate. Absolutely. And and this it started in my journal I, I was literally doing a writing exercise one day um I think the question was something like who were you before life changed you mm. and I wrote about who I was as a girl on the stage performing um dancing with complete liberation and I just it was just journaling about that and and then I it, it began to change into something else and that's and again I just started to know oh this is is it a blog post? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> this ain't a blog post. <laughs> it's something far longer than that. It needs, it deserves space. And it, it started from there. But I, I think journaling is a wonderful way to integrate whether you share it or not. Um, whether it leads to actually making something out of it, writing a piece. Um, it's time with ourselves, you know, it's time to, that's how I see it. It's like a just time to talk to my younger self or, it's about self-acceptance and so yeah. yes i love I that think... talk to your younger self talk to your yeah. future self get the wisdom from them the you who's already done it yeah. um you know it's a connection thing so this has been awesome once again thank you so much for joining us claire and if people i know there's no date no specificity to it but when it does come how are people best to find out about it yeah my Substack subscribers will be the first to hear about it i write once a week on there and Sometimes I write about this, you know, writing journey that I'm on and that that comes up from time to time. So, yeah, it's glitterandbiscuits.substack.com or you can just go to substack.com, search for Glitter and Biscuits. But that's where you can find me and you can you can subscribe there and you'll just receive my my weekly letter. You'll be the first to know and you'll get all the goodness in the meantime. And it's something special about being along the journey of something being created Mm -hmm. so you can still follow along for the you know the tail end or however long it ends up being for the rest of the book to come amazing thanks Suzanne thank you so much Claire and thank you everyone for listening I'll catch you on the next one bye for now